So now we're on to uh, trade commission. Trade commission. Did everybody get my um, email? My trade report. Okay. A few high points here. Um, we were supposed to have our tree planting, our spring tree planting, April 26, but that is now off due to the fact that the nursery cannot dig the trees out of the frozen ground. Um, we get our trees up near Buffalo, so it's probably a little bit colder up there still. So we're, the tree planting will tentatively be on May 3rd. Um, and I have a list of where the trees are gonna go if anybody wants to see these, this list here. So. There's been one request to have a tree, two trees taken down. Um, we have to measure to make sure they're in the right of the way. We haven't done that yet. Um, and then the one tree that we have, another tree we had, um, neighbor had put in at, uh, to have a tree taken down at 6 South Street. He lived at 8 South Street, so we wanted to make sure that the person who has the tree on their property was in compliance with this. So she has put in a permit, so um, Tree Commission has approved the, the removal, and I now ask the board to approve the uh, removal of the tree at 6 South Street. So, um, any discussions? Oh, is that the second? Second, yeah. yeah. Any discussions? Any, I don't know much about the tree, so I... Yeah. Okay. Uh, where does this fall in relation to the other trees that we have pending? This is we'll approve it, but it still goes on. It goes on the list of the other trees. On the list of yeah. those waiting to be. Yeah. And now that the, now that the uh, snow has you know melted, we're going to put all these out to bid. There's five or six trees. Trees damaged or failing or dead or yeah, it's dead. It's dead. dying. Yeah. And the tree commission recommended removal. Yeah, the tree commission recommended removal. Um, what the tree commission does is they, they go around and they look at the trees and they're dead. <coughs> How many do we have on the pending list now? Six. That's including the ones on Locust Grove? Yes. Oh. Yes. So, so with the removal of this tree, are you going to immediately plant another tree? Well, what we do is we look at the uh, areas that are you know, wide open and uh, go to the homeowners and see if they would like trees planted in there right away. Some people don't. So what we want? What's a tree city? city? Yeah, I know. We're a tree city. Four years now. So what? What the tree commission does is they take one quadrant at a time and look around and see where some trees should be planted. This time we're going to be over in uh, the Stortini Drive. There's a lot of area over there that needs trees. And those are going in the median, or those are going in the yard? No, no. We can't plant in people's yard in, in their private property. It's going in the village right away. Right, but it's going in the. Well, wherever we can, we're going to put it on the other side of the sidewalk. Okay. We try to keep the trees out of the median, which is between the sidewalk and the road. <coughs> if you notice that in the, the report, I kind of mentioned that to. Oh, okay. So we have a motion on the table to remove that tree on South Street. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So moved. One recusal. No. Yeah, no. Scott, Scott. Excuse himself. Um, Meg Crawford and Cecily attended the uh, Tree City Luncheon on March 27th up in Albany. It's the annual meeting for Tree City the annual Tree City Luncheon, it's called. And they mentioned that there's some grants up there that they're going to be looking into. Gary. Um, and they're working with the hospital to try to protect some of the trees that are there during the construction. And that's about it for the Tree Commission. I, well, I also should say that um, Meg and uh, a person from the highway department, Tom Johnson, attended a morning workshop. And um, Tom's all excited about this, so he's um, going to go around and, and professionally prune some of the trees that need to be done. They've done a handful already, right? Yes, they have. Big success. Yes. Thank you. So next item here is special request. There's a couple, uh, like I said before, we 
took care of some business at our, at our uh, budget workshop, so I just want to put, put some of those out there, uh, which are not on the agenda, but uh, NAMI was, that's the National Alliance for Mental Illness? Yeah. Okay, so they were here last month, and in the meantime, we approved uh, them. There. It's gonna be a ribbon campaign uh, along, I guess, between Center and Garden Street. On, yes. on market and then between Livingston and uh, South, Street. South Street. Yeah, so there'll be some some ribbons for mental health awareness. Uh, we had our first um, event application, which was the Taste of Rhinebeck, which we approved. That was kind of uh, kind of on a deadline since it started about 45 minutes ago. It's happening right now out there in the village. So um, if you want to taste after after we're done here. And we also uh, had approved the American Legion uh, request for the Memorial Day Parade. So those were taken care of in, in the meantime. Um, the next one here is the Museum of Rhinebeck History sign. There was a request um, from the museum to put a sign on the village property uh, on the left side of the municipal lot over here on the grassy median, kind of by the big building trash can. And we kind of deferred to the planning board and probably don't have the, uh, you familiar with it though, right? What they, okay. No one got it? A response from the planning board? Okay, so the planning board looked at it and I'll just give a review here. <clears throat> they had questions regarding the suitability of the village property as a location, given that it does not provide much information about the village. There were some suggestions that the sign should include highlights for historic sites in the village or maybe something that provided some mapping or directions, self-directed walking tours uh, to highlight some of the historic sites such as the post office, the Beekman Arms, Delmar House, Reformed Church, Cemetery, etc. in 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 the village uh, proper. And they had some also had some concerns about uh, who was going to maintain the who was actually going to maintain the sign. Once it's in place, there were some other comments that weren't on here about, uh, you know, if that was the appropriate location, not just the content, but if that was the appropriate location for uh, the sign. It's a pretty big sign that would go right there. Uh, there were some, you know, I heard some comments, maybe they thought over by the chamber building, um, across from the bank, maybe a better spot. So, you know, we asked the planning board to take a look and, you know, they kind of gave some non-conclusive recommendation, so it's still, I guess, back on our, back on our play down. Any thoughts? Well, I was hoping we going to get some kind of recommendation on what we want to do. Yeah. Not just put it back in. Well, did the historic people look at some of the other options, or can we kick it back to them for the moment? Yeah, that sounds, sounds fair enough. To ask them to address some of these questions or concerns from the planning board. You know, starting with the location and then the, because it only had about, it had what, the Equipment House? Yeah. The museum and Wilderstein? Right, it should have more more items on there. Yeah. So it's a big, and, and the items that were on there were like in the town. They're all outside in the yeah. town. 30 by 60 feet. 30 by 60 feet, sorry. On a five foot, uh, two four by fours coming out of the crowd, so it's up. Yeah, it's pretty good. So we'll ask uh, ask them to take take a look at that and get back to us. Maybe give us a follow up presentation. Do you know the date of the list? I don't know. I think they were at that meeting at the planning board. Did you get a mock up of the sign to show you? Yeah, they did. They did have a. Uh, <coughs> they had like a a roll up. And then it had a yeah. yeah, it was an actual size, but it wasn't, you know, a rigid thing. The, uh, the next one on here is a, a event request or event application for a voice, or for the Boy Scouts for a fireworks display on May 17th. It, they have their uh, New York State uh, paperwork in order for the fireworks display. They provided their um, insurance. They have approval from the fire department. Um, yes, I have not heard this, please. I have not heard that okay. 
Uh, but they have it. Uh, but they have their, their state permit. Uh, everything appears, appears to be in order there. There's going to be, in addition to the Boy Scouts, in the event application, it's just for fireworks, but I think there's going to be camping stuff there as well. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make a motion to approve this event application. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. May 17th, fireworks at the fairgrounds. Uh, the next one on here is the Lions Club has requested um, to set up a coin drop at the usual sites, one on East Market Street and one on Montgomery Street, um, the date being May 3rd and 4th. So I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the Lions Club coin drop. Any discussion? Is there a car show going on that weekend? Or? It's usually one of the big weekends yeah. at the fair, but I don't know what's, what's happening. That's the typical weekend they request is car show weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime we have a coin drop request, it's Oh, I know. It's 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 yeah, it's I know. I know. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We have requests um, <coughs> from the Rhinebeck Parkinson's support group. Uh, asking us to declare April as Parkinson's Awareness Month. Uh, we did this in the past, and I think last year it says here they had 20 Hudson Valley municipalities issue uh, such a proclamation. So I would like to make a motion that we that we do that again and declare uh, April as Parkinson's Awareness Month here in the village of Rhinebeck. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Last one under special requests. We have, I think we'll get this one. Yes. Oh, you did. You nice. did? Ice cream? Yeah, we got a, uh, a request uh, from, from Brian Collis uh, from Mr. Dingling Ice Cream. He wants to. Uh, he wants to uh, get permission to uh, drive his ice cream truck around the village here. And uh, what's that? That's what it is. It's a peddling. He was here the day they were looking for the form. So I guess we don't get a whole lot of these. But we uh, we do have a peddling and solicitation permit application. Here and he filled one out, and it came with all the. Driver's license, insurance. He had everything in order, right, Pat? Uh, yes. It's all, it's all on the, yeah. all on the application. Yeah. I only brought the top two pages. Has he done this before? He uh, had from there was documentation from another town. Yeah, I think it's Latham. Have we had we had someone before do it. And this is not a repeat. This is not no. for the last. I don't think so. Not, not for the last few years. Not for the last couple years. Mm -hmm. So what if somebody else wants a pedaling license mm -hmm. to do the same, would we consider, would we say no because we already have a Mr. Daniel? I mean, do they, do they have exclusive rights, territories, like, you know, like the Mr. Daniel franchise kind of thing? I don't know. What if we had two or three competitor? driving around with the bell ringing and would be, well, they would have to apply for the pedaling license, right? We wouldn't want to have two or three trucks. First one, first serve. So you know, all the ice cream? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Is there a provision for ice cream for the former mayor? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, this one thing that some communities have been in where they do have more than one truck is, uh, I don't know whether we might request that while he's stopped and serving ice cream, he turns off his music. I have had people, their neighborhoods where the constant uh, refrain of this one little jingle that goes from being delightful to annoying mm -hmm. really fast. So one thing we just might want to just mention. Sure. Maybe to listen to his jingle. Um, um, <laughs> it can be annoying. Well, I think it was, uh, I have some other reservations about that. 
because it shows how the kids makes the kids run around in the neighborhood and can potentially be unsafe. Well, I will make a motion to approve the peddling permit for uh, for Brian Collis and the ice cream truck. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? All right, you got that? So, so moves, four to one. Um, next we got, uh, I just wanted, we have other business. Before we move on to the thing on the agenda, I just wanted to um, make a brief announcement. I got these uh, forms about hazardous material disposal, and we just missed the one. There was one up in the town of Rabeck last weekend, I think it was, but. So every month, I think we'll announce this. There's one coming up at the Resource Recovery Agency, um, I believe down in Poughkeepsie on May 3rd from 7.30 to 9.30 <clears throat> in the morning. And if you go to duchessnewyork.gov uh, with Joel, I'm sure you can give us a, a full update on, the, on the hazardous material disposal. Um, so the next one's coming up on May 3rd, just to let you know. Maybe before we go on to our other business, would you like to address us now, Joel? Sure. I apologize. You know, uh, Pat, I ran into Pat on Sunday, so I'm sorry. I think I should have been here at 6. My fault. No apology necessary. We've been waiting for We it. saved the 7 o'clock slot for you. Thank you. I do have handouts. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Kevin and Mr. Cochank and everybody, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, uh, Last night, uh, seven of us, uh, if, you, if you missed it, it was on the front page of the Daily Frame on Sunday. There's been a lot of coverage in the Poughkeepsie Journal about these oil trains, oil trains and oil barges uh, coming down along the river, coming down on the river. And so for the second month in a row, last night, I was about seven or eight of us signed on to a letter I circulated based, based on the work of Cena Cousin and Riverkeeper and the Sierra Club calling for uh, a moratorium on that type of stuff until it can be proven safe. And uh, I urge people to go to the website for Scenic Cuts and for more on that, sceniccutson.org. Um, one of the things I handed out is uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. at Vassar College, some of the top uh, local zero waste experts in the region and nationally known zero waste experts are gonna be Skyping and are speaking. Uh, the current contract that Dutchess County has with the Covanta to run the county incinerator. Uh, runs out this June. If you go to dcra.org for more information on the household hazardous waste and disposal days, well, if you go to that website, you'll also see that um, there's an RFP right on the website. And I talked to Wheel Operator today in Westchester County. They're convinced that in the next week or so, they're finalizing the contract, supposedly, with the Dutch County Resource Recovery Agency to run the county incinerator. I just found that out about 5 or 4.30, supposedly, according to Wheel Operator. We'll see what Colbert has to say about this. But uh, I know a number of uh, folks here on the board, Gary and, and Howie, I think, are aware of the work of Shabazz Jackson. Uh, he got beacon to a recycling rate of 70% over 20 years ago. Uh, points out that half of the waste stream is organics. There are 200 different communities all across the country that are doing curbside collection of, of food waste. Um, Neil Selden from the Institute for Local, Local Self Reliance is going to be Skyping in. He points out in communities like San Jose, the food waste is collected, put in an, an anaerobic digester that can be uh, made for methane, and the methane can be put. The, the incinerator can be retrofitted to, to, to burn cleaner. I would prefer to have it be retrofitted, whereas my good friend Tom Mannix likes to say just shut down. But in any case, uh, it's not going to happen again this year, this type of uh, uh, a forum uh, where uh, uh, Laura Pettit from New Paltz runs the recycling center. They've, they're saving an incredible amount of money. They've cut the recycling rate. Uh, they've, they've cut the disposal rate uh, in half just a few years. So, so it's tomorrow. Wednesday, 5.30 p.m., Vassar College, Rockefeller Hall, room 200. Please come to that if you can. Um, Mark Lytle here in the village, a uh, Bard College professor, several years ago wrote a book about Rachel Carson. Uh, I try to honor Rachel Carson every year. April 14th is the anniversary of her passing. Uh, Nikki Struinsky, who's the Red Hook County Legislator, she and I are doing a candlelight vigil, uh, Rachel Carson Memorial Candlelight Vigil for neighbor notification for pesticide applications, something that Drake Grant was very strong on, something I've been pushing for 10 years. We're trying to get that law passed this year. Spring is sprung, people are gardening. 
There's a lot of pesticides being sprayed. So that is happening this coming Monday, which is Rachel Carson's anniversary of her death. Uh, this coming Monday at 6 p.m. right before the county office building, 22 Market Street. And uh, there's a lot of different things going on. The, the Repair Cafe, I want to give a lot of credit to Gary Kenton for hooking me up really closely with uh, the, the town's conservation advisory board, and Jeff Scott in particular, uh, folks from Northern Duchess News and Southern Duchess News, and um, uh, about town. Uh, and, and Kathy Kinsella and the town board passed this unanimously. Kathy Kinsella from the highway crew has gotten uh, the, the guys who work at the highway garage what the Repair Cafe is about, and we're going to have one on Saturday, May 3rd, noon to 4 p.m., right across the way at the town hall. You bring your quote-unquote beloved but broken items to be fixed. We have some fixtures already committed. We can use a few more. I'm at 453-205-876-2488. But whether it's toys, lamps, alarm clocks, appliances, we're, we're toying with the notion of spreading a tarp out in the back of the town hall garage and there are people ready to fix mowers. But if you have something that's beloved but broken, we're going to try to do this once every two months with the permission of the town board. We want to make sure this first one uh, is a success. There's going to be lots of music. That's Saturday, May 3rd, right over across the street, town hall from noon to 4 p.m. And um, the only other thing I was going to say is uh, the, the transition groups across the river and the permaculture groups have launched something called the Ulster Ulster County Tool Bank. The Daily Freeman reported on this a couple years ago. I think it's high time that we here in Dutchess County had a Dutchess County Tool Bank. And uh, so this is not uh, a lending library for uh, power tools. This is uh, to clear the land, prepare the land, gardening, livestock, miscellaneous. It's about localizing the economy, economy pro promoting local food and farming and gardening. So we're, we're looking to start this. Uh, Chop wood, saws, cut branches, shovels, picks, forks, spades, trowels, water containers, push mowers, size, carpentry tools, buckets, you name it. Again, if you would like to help, I can't do this alone. If you want to help get off the ground, the Dutchess County uh, Tool Bank, similar to the Elsa County Tool Bank, call me, 453-2105. Uh, I'm doing a forum about all that type of new economy stuff. That's going to be Tuesday the 15th at Town Hall right across the way at 5.30 p.m. And there's some other stuff going on for Earth Day, but I don't I think that's enough. And thank you for letting me do my thing, and I appreciate it. And welcome again to the new member of the community. Thanks, Joel. Yeah. So next thing on here is uh, an update that Heinz is going to give us on the uh, financial software package that we are Actually, we have already approved the purchase of. We approved the purchase of. I had uh, given the contract to, uh, to Rich to the rules, and uh, he made one suggestion uh, and the changes. I went back to the uh, company uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to make the changes, and uh, they will uh, bring us a new, a new contract. The changes that we made, the change that we made was that we don't have to, uh, there to be no increase in in the system. And uh, one other thing I found out is in, uh, that going after after this contract, this is what is what we need to do here in the village to to, to upgrade some of our systems. And uh, the three things we need to do: number one, we need a faster internet connection, a uh, much faster internet connection, uh, which we can do, but it's going to cost us a, a, a few more dollars. But that's not a bank a bank point at all. Uh, we do need to upgrade uh, Chrissy News uh, the, uh, the uh, assistant uh, clerk, deputy clerk uh, machine who is uh, way, you know, the, 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 the 1900s uh, technology. So we need to get a new computer, uh, get, a, get a new operating system on it, and we also need a, uh, a laser printer, which we have discussed before. And uh, because uh, this software only works in this company, only works with laser printers. So, uh, given that, I will ask them to, to send me a new contract and uh, put it on your table sometime tomorrow for signature. As far as the cost is concerned, I had told the board it's about uh, $10,000 for the software and uh, $5,592 uh, per year uh, cost for support. Uh, we will be paying half of that $15,000 uh, in, in this fiscal year and the uh, rest of the $15,000 in the next fiscal year. 
Did you you talk to Northeast, the computer? Mm -hmm. Our computer. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I just got the the submission. Okay. Today. I think you you've got it. Mm -hmm. you may, you may have got but it. how does that play into the tech grant that we're getting? Well, I don't know. I don't know, okay. Northeast, but we we need to. Uh, uh, we, did, we, we don't need to buy it right away, but uh, I, I suggest that we get the computer going as soon as we can. Uh, it's probably about $50 million. Uh, the, the printer, we can wait a little while until we have the system installed here. We also need to, I think we need to update our uh, transmission speed uh, here because I think it is pretty, pretty important. It's better. Right? Yeah. yeah. And the standard workday resolution is the next uh, next topic on there. That's, that's all you've had. Thanks. Uh, according to the New York State Office of the Comptroller and the New York State Local Retirement System, we have to to set a standard workday reporting resolution for the village justice, the trustees, for anyone who is on the retirement system that does not use a time clock. So any of you members of the board, you know, if you're on the retirement system, what it means is you have to fill out a, a, a three-month timesheet that shows the amount of hours that you were used, and then it's divided, and then we figure out how many a standard work day, a work hour, yeah, so a work day. Unless you have already worked for the state in the past, like I, I have four years in the state retirement system from previous employment, so then I show up on their radar, they need this reporting from me. Judge Sanchez, uh, you know, he works for the state uh, in his, his primary job, so he needs it. But if, you don't, if you're not already in the New York State Retirement System, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So, you, you can do quarterly? <laughs> What's that? Quarterly reports? Are you in the state? I have it, yeah. Okay. So, so your state? name will probably pop up. Mm -hmm. This state? New York, yeah. Okay. You, you fill out a, a three month, and once it's on file, it, it stays. But what we have to do is, is do the standard reporting resolution. It has to be read, then it has to be posted, then it can be sent to the state. So, um, I, guess I, so I already have. So I guess I have to read it. Uh, be it resolved that the Village of Rhinebeck Location Code 40241 hereby establishes the following as standard work days for the elected and appointed officials and will report the following day's work to the New York State and local reti employees retirement system based on the timekeeping system records or the records of activities maintained submitted by these officials to the clerk of this body. Elected officials were William were Village Justice William Sanchez and Trustee Heath Tortorella with their registration, social security numbers and such. A standard work day, hours per day, six hours. And additional On this eighth day of April 2014, Patricia D. Kuhn, Dayton acted the same April 8, 2014. I, Patricia D. Kuhn, D. Kuhn, Clerk of the governing body of the Village of Rhinebeck of the State of New York to hereby certify that I have compared the foregoing with the original resolution passed by such a board as a legally convened meeting held on the 8th day of April 2014 on file as part of the minutes of such meeting and that the same is a true copy thereof and the whole of such original. I further certify that the full board consists of five members and that two of such members were no, and the five of such members were present at such meeting and that you have to vote on a resolution. So sorry, I went too far. That's okay. Just one note of clarification when they talk about the standard work day. That doesn't mean that Willie works here six hours a day or that I work here six hours a day. No. That just means that the full work week would be 30 hours. If we worked 10 hours, we get a third of a work week. It's just establishing for some reason elected officials 6.0 hours is the is what they consider the standard. They use that six hours to determine that you know some kind of equation as to what we get credit for in the system. So if I worked two hours, I you know only get a, get a third of that. What to collect to further clarify? Judge Sanchez gave to me a a timesheet that has the numbers of hours per month, how many hours, and what those hours were, whether it be court decision or hearings and then those hours were divided by the 
six hours per day, and then they're reported at the daily, at, at how many days. And I just heard about it, so I'm working on my three month uh, history now, or two months in. So let me ask a question is, is there money involved in terms of the, that the village has to pay in, into the system? Uh, for for elected officials no. for, for retirement? I do not believe no. so. Okay. Of course, that wouldn't be no budget. Yeah, this no. has been something that's been going on forever. This was a report that was, I found the letter in the state in August, and then there was a second request in December, and now we're uh, trying to get it taken care of now. Yeah, but does that come out of our pension? We, we set aside every money for pensions, right? I don't think that there's, like the police, there's not a fee involved, and I think it's the same. But I'd have to check, but I don't think there's So, how does the state pay the pension? Do you know the Where's that money coming from? I have a little bit of control there, so. Yeah. <coughs> but I'm, I'm sure this is yeah. as easy to make it to work out. I don't know how it's funny. At some point, if, I don't know. If, we, if we need to account for this, we have to put it in the budget. Has it been in the budget in the past? No, I haven't ever seen it. Because these same people have, well, have been, except for Heath, but well, Judge Sanchez has been reported for as long as I've been. Okay. So I need a motion to. I'll make the motion to approve it as read by Pat. Second. Who second? Here. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And this will be posted in four thirty days. Okay. Thank you, Pat. And right back to you again, Pat, to discuss the uh, copier lease that we were. Uh... We had contacted, we meaning the board and the village, had contacted three different companies regarding replacing the copier in the clerk's office. We have reviewed the said information from the different companies. The companies were, I have them. They don't have to give it to us, we just have to. Just to tell you who it is? Yeah, go with the, okay. the lowest term. After the review and comparing apples to apples, the All Star, which is located in Wappingers, had the best price for what it is, and the total will be $262.82 per month for the lease of the copier. And that includes the, we will get 12,000 yearly copies of color. It's a color printer, fax, and scan. And that's consistent with what uh, Karen is up here? Yes. Why don't we ask her about the, you also need a printer, right? Well, Karen needs a printer. That's what Karen needs, but that's that's not what this is. This was Just to get the copier to get it replaced. This will be networked and service all of the users here. As long as she's in the network, Karen can come yeah. right down through to that, and she can scan, and she can do anything she wants on that. And the next item is the, uh, the printer, the laser printer. Would we ask them for that also? Or just for the copier? This is just the copier, because the copier is not included in the grant. So we had to address that. So the printer is included. A printer is included. You can get that through that technology grant. One printer. One printer. One printer. That's all the village was allotted was one. So we had a tech grant that was written by uh, the town supervisor. It was one of these consolidation of um, services. So they got a grant for there's going to be a fiber optic cable that runs between the two buildings and. The way I understand it right now, they're going to have the server, so I don't know how that's going to affect our internet speed because we're going to be connected and that using should, that should be transparent. Using a shared service, not I mean, but we won't have our own then here. Oh, so it, it and there's going to be a server over there, but you know they got something like uh, what, 16 machines, workstations, yeah. and we got nine I think in the in the breakout, so we we have to to look at the, the whole thing, because they've got machines for the record park and the highway department. All ours are right here in this in this building. I don't know how it was. And we don't know what printer they? It's a laser printer. Just printer. And there's also a, a laser fiche uh, scanner. Right. And we don't know yet if it <coughs> function as a regular scanner or if it's only going to you know, archive documents. Uh, 
into the laser cage. So we need a motion to purchase that, uh, or enter that lease. I'll make the motion to uh, enter into the lease agreement as uh, as per Pat's recommendation. Second. Any discussion? And that comes with service, right, Pat? Yes. Yep. Yes. That's, do you want me to break it down? No, 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 no. Because yeah. what we have now doesn't no no, have okay. service. The because service. The, it's all in one, it's a full service plan. Okay. So what we have now is multiple machines and our copier is a single purpose black and white and it's very old and doesn't have we don't have a service contract and we have multiple machines taking up a lot of space this will give us the service and we did pet did a study based on the amount of paper that we've purchased so it should we should be well within the, uh, the needs with this is it a scanner as well yeah yes scanner. Yeah. Yeah. scanner fax two-sided printer copier. And you talk about it, you talk about a printer, a laser printer, that's for somebody's desk, uh, desktop. Yeah, someplace. more or less. Like yeah. for printing checks and food, yeah. that type yeah. of thing. And then the new financial software needs a, a dedicated laser, laser printer. So. And how much is this again? 200 and... This is 260, 262, 82. We have a second, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> um, the next thing, you got this whole section here, Pat, talking about the, the uh, radio, yes. please. Yes. So the radios are, are used to communicate between the uh, departments, like uh, sewer, water, and uh, <coughs> department, and, and Pat kind of has the home base here in the, uh, in the village hall so she can communicate with them. And as I understand it, the current hardware that we have, the radios are uh, outdated and no longer supported, so we have to renew the lease with, with new equipment. Does that sound right? Yes. The radios are old. There's no parts available. The highway lease is at the end of its, the lease is at the end of its lifespan. It includes both the water and the sewer, and it would upgrade the base. And the, the departments also use it to communicate, because I hear them communicate. They can, no, well, they do, yeah, from interdepartmental and also town to village. Because if Kathy Kinsella needs to get in touch with them, it's a way that she can get in touch with any of the departments right away. Okay. They have their own, though. The town has their own. Okay, and ours is compatible. With the, the yeah, exactly. Okay. If she might not have their cell phone numbers or yeah. whatever. So we're just renewing the lease. Correct. Is it a change in the rate? I think so. They didn't, I, to be honest, I didn't look at them. They didn't. It's 667 per month, and we divide that. It's 200. We divide that between all the different departments. It's about the same as it was. You're renewing the lease on the equipment? Correct. Yeah. Did you say it was updated in parts one available? Would be, they you would get be, a new equipment? Yeah. Yes. It's, it would be brand new equipment, new lease, new equipment. That's why yeah, they provide the service, service and, the, and the equipment. Correct. All right, I'd like to make a motion to approve that as described. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Rich, we, got, we have a question on, uh, we have some equipment. I have one that's in the, like the old computer in the justice uh, office. It's been in a closet for four years. Somebody wants to buy it. What do we have to do? We have to put it in the corner of the surplus equipment. And then we have to put, put it up to bed on a computer. I think somebody's got to take a look at wiping off whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <clears> that's, <throat> that's going to be done. I mean, the village has declared a surplus. Mm -hmm. So we got to put it up. Well, I mean, you've got to get value for it. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what a... We have some 2008 desktop. So we have an offer for $50 for the desktop. Mm -hmm. which, which may be what it's worth. Yeah. If it's got XP on it, I understand it's worth nothing as of today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll make a motion to accept the $50 offer on the surplus. I said computers. So you're going to declare it as surplus equipment not needed for the village? Yeah. It is surplus. It's, uh, yes. I'd like to make a motion to declare it surplus and 
and dispose of it for $15. Second. Any discussion? As long as it's wiped clean, it's in the yeah. 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 It's going to be wiped clean. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we can do the same thing with, we've been cleaning out from the old police station. We have uh, the cabinets and metal lockers, so we can. Yeah. I mean, you can put everything, if you have a large amount of items, you can put them on just public. Well, we already did that, and there's only a few. Yeah. A few items left. The concept is you have to get value yeah. for it. We thought about a yard sale, maybe with a farmer's market open, but maybe it just takes some, takes some bits. And Pat, we have one, I, I see it there. I didn't get a copy of it, but on a garbage truck. Um, so we had a, uh, a bid come in. We had put the, the vehicles out for uh, out to bid, but we do have one here after the bid period was over for fifteen thousand dollars for the for the garbage truck. Nobody else bid on the garbage truck. Nobody bid on it. So I don't. What's that? The scrap? No, no, that was a recycling truck. We had talked somewhat about repurposing. Right. This uh, vehicle, so I don't know if we want to continue to explore that or if we want to consider. Well, it might give you all the information that I, I think you were thinking of maybe retrofitted to pick up brush. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't got it yet. Got the information on it. So I'm going to wait till we get Yeah, let's wait because. Okay. But we. It is a 2000 garbage truck with 74,000 miles on it. So, but we do have. But let's try we to do have an outline on the time. Let's try to act on this next month. Um, yeah. <coughs> One piece of correspondence I have here from an uh, organization called uh, Rebuilding Together. They uh, are accepting applications for uh, no cost uh, home repairs. There's some um, income requirements and stuff. And I gave Pat a, uh, a flyer that's probably going to be hanging up uh, downstairs. And it's all, this is the Dutchess County chapter of it. So, um, you know, residents could apply for some help uh, with repairs. Pat, do you have that? See that resolution there? This one? Is that the? The maintenance? Yeah. There we go. That's not under correspondence, but we didn't, uh, didn't hit it before. So I have a resolution here, uh, basically to create the position of maintenance worker, which would be uh, located here at the at the at the village hall, and I will uh, I'll read the resolution. It says whereas the board of trustees of the village of Rima has determined that additional maintenance is required for the village hall, and whereas the board of trustees also is in the process of reviewing and establishing its budget for the 2014-15 fiscal year, therefore be it resolved that the board of trustees trustees hereby creates the position of maintenance worker to be filled by the board of trustees at a later date. I'm going to make the motion to, uh, to accept this. Second. Any discussion? I'd say we're, we're not, we're adding the position, but not adding a person. Most right. likely we'll be transitioning an employee from another department. Um, so there'll be no, no additional cost. We already have an employee right now uh, that's classified. Uh, basically, I'm on loan from the street department that comes down here and maintains the building, but we want to, uh, you know, dedicate the person down here and classify them appropriately for the for the duties. This person's supervisor is the supervisor will be myself or uh, designee. And we have a job description for this person. We have their tasks and duties here. Yes, we have a job description uh, from civil service, which lines up pretty well. Dutch County Civil Service, which lines up pretty well with uh, everything that that happens here, it still allows for. Uh, operation of equipment, and so I can still do plowing and such. But basically, it's, it's kind of a, uh, a handyman position around here. The village hall will kick, take care of the cleaning and maintenance at the uh, police station as well. And our plan is, you know, take care of the municipal lot and all the, you know, the common areas around here on the buildings. Was there a um, and who had done that work previous to this position being created? Same person, but same the highway department. Yeah, the same highway. person been for for years, but it's been a varying uh, degree of commitment here to the you know time commitment here to the to the village hall. Can we should we make a list of other duties he 
can perform, like yeah. you know, the parking lot, maintain the parking lot. Yep. Things that are specific to pick up the garbage in the, yes. you know, the garbage. He'll be in charge of the garbage cans in the village, so mm -hmm. it can be done on a regular basis. Right. So we can make it. Yeah. It's kind of been policed the village more. Will it include the janitorial type duties? I mean, are those being yes. previously done? Yep. Right now we have a cleaning service that takes care of the police station, so uh, we will be. This person will be taking care of that as well, so we won't be paying. Uh, we won't be outsourcing the cleaning over there. Cool. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Heath, I have, a, I have an item that I'm not sure where it should have been. I didn't think about it until just now. Sure. But um, in 2010, the town and the village uh, joined 73 other New York municipalities to create an energy task force. I think it's been dormant for a little while, but it's it's going to gear back up. So I just wanted to um, tell uh, citizens here that the task force is looking for members. And um, people can contact me. I'll give them more information. But the idea is to combat climate change by making communities more energy efficient and working toward a sustainable future. So. Um, I think there are only two remaining members on the committee, so they need more people on, on the task force. Okay. Suzanne Kelly? Uh, yes. Yeah. Joe Gelb and I were on the committee for a while, but okay. there's like four of us. And right. We needed more members, so right. everybody's uh, environmentally conscious, but nobody would come to the right. meeting, so we're looking for people to join this committee. Right. Okay. Do uh, you want to do the uh, sure. water and sewer adjustments? Yeah. Gary, I want to do the, the sewer adjustments this, this time around. I, I, I am not the slightest bit insulted. <laughs> uh, wastewater adjustments. So we had uh, 90, we had two final uh, two final uh, bills. Uh, one for ninety one dollars, one for one hundred thirty dollars. We have two new owners, uh, which gets charged twenty five dollars for uh, hooking up. Um, we had uh, uh, two, two issues from a previous problem uh, last last month. We did that was to do that, five thousand, so to speak, and uh, we, we lost a couple of uh, data points. Uh, well, we lost a lot of them then, but we have two two more this month uh, that we had to adjust. Uh, one for one hundred twenty-eight dollars and one for two hundred and seventy-five dollars. Um, and a third one. The last one is a, uh, we had to prorate a new owner uh, for $61. As far as the water adjustments are concerned, we had uh, 25, uh, five new owners and four new final bills. The new owners are each $25. The, uh, the final bills vary from uh, 2760 to uh, 2071-7140. We had one return check, which we got charged uh, twenty-five dollars. Uh, we had two uh, incorrect meter readings: uh, one of them for forty-six dollars and forty-nine cents, and one for fifty, uh, one for twenty-seven dollars and ninety-eight cents. Um, we we writing off two hundred and thirty-four dollars for the town garage. Uh, for, for water uses in the town garage. Now that is not necessarily that they're using $234 worth of water. That's because of the size of the pipe that we get. And, and usually the, the water consumption is, is nowhere near so. Uh, one other thing is, uh, well, yes, we have on, on Old Post Road, uh, there's uh, 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 one particular uh, house uh, that used to House, one of the wells that the village had, and they have for perpetuity, uh, they don't get charged any water. $54 in that, and that is about it. So I'd like to make a motion to uh, accept the, uh, the water, the wastewater and the <coughs> water adjustments as, as read. And there's a uh, piece of paper here that is uh, with it. Do you second? Second. That, uh, yes, yeah, the, yeah, the uh, $54 for that agreement for the loan. Do we have that every month? Yeah, every, every quarter. Okay, I just don't remember here. And then the town 
So what was the? They had unusually large. No, no, no. They, uh, we, I asked. I never had a water meter in there. And about a year ago, I uh, when I tried to figure out where all our water goes, I uh, I asked them to put a water meter in in the town garage, and uh, we. And they needed a certain size water meter. I think it's an inch and a half, right? That they have coming in there. And that we charged $234 for that. Oh. Uh, but we told them that for the time being, we are not going to charge the town any water for the highway department. Now, you know, that is not forever. Okay. You know, we went, uh, Chip Reardon went over to the town board and told them that we, you know, for the time being, they're going to be exempt. Okay. So we could do it forever. Right. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Do um, you want to go through the minutes for us there, Pat? Which ones we got? Uh, <coughs> Are you telling some of you didn't get all these minutes. We have February 11th. February 25th, February 26th, March 3rd, March 10th, March 11th, and March 18th. Now, I said some Yes, they were corrected, and I sent those out. All the corrections are on there? Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted on those. All those. All those. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, vouchers are downstairs? Yes, they are. They're on the table. Okay. Can you do one? Yes. Yeah. I have one more thing. Do you want to make the motion to approve vouchers? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a no, we don't. We don't. What do you talk about? <laughs> what do you got? You're trying to, to uh, trick me here. Huh? What do you got? Well, I have, um, as you said before, I'm the, uh, I don't know if I'm the liaison, technically the liaison, or just the village employee, appointee, the Thompson Mazzarella parking lot. So, the committee started March 8, 2004, um, with five members. And two, there's two village appointees. At the time, it was myself and, and Bob Ellsworth. And then in March 13, 2006, they added another village appointee besides other people. Um, so there's somebody that wants to be on the Thompson Mazzarella Park Committee. That's my point here. She filled out an application. But I'm trying, uh, and today um, I just got confirmation from the town clerk that there is, if Bruce Washburn is considered the rec committee appoint, appointee, because uh -huh. he lives in the village too, then there is another additional village appointee that can appoint to this to the committee. So I don't know if everybody wanted to look at this person's, uh, we don't have to do it tonight, we can do it Monday. We have a, we have a budget meeting Monday, right? I mean, budget hearing. Workshop. Yeah, it's a public hearing. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to give you all a copy of this person and you can okay. it over and then we'll decide on that. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now I know we uh, we had talked about the museum arrivement history sign earlier, but I noticed that Marilyn is here now. So if you would like to come up and I guess we can just put this out there as a general apology. I know some people came in late. We did post the, uh, the meeting time, but... If it didn't, uh, the message didn't make, make it to you. We started at six, and that was to make some time for our uh, the swearing in of our, our new trustees and the completion of our reorganization process here. So, Mr. Sauer, you, you look like you're about six foot tall. Almost. Almost. Okay, <laughs> that's almost as good. <laughs> Do they need to help? Yeah. Marilyn, did you see the feedback from the planning board? That was the question we, we had. No, I, I didn't. I did talk to David today, and I said, but I would really like to, you know, I can't tell you how busy my life is, but um, I, I reminded myself three times that day that I had a meeting, and then I didn't show up. 
Um, and I apologize to them for not showing up. Um, I, I reminded myself every hour on the hour that I have to show up tonight. So anyhow, um, the sign, this is uh, um, two foot by four foot. He was able to reduce it down to um, the sign regulations. Okay, and you can pretend that Mr. Sauer is a um, post, and I'm a post, and um, so uh, it'd be slimmer than what either one of us are. Um, and there will be a copper roof on top of it, which won't be any taller than uh, Mr. Sauer. Um, the comment that I heard was that they would love to see the village to be bigger with like the Bickman Arms on it, the Reformed Church, and, and, and all of that. And um, that's what I heard today. And I just, I thought, how can we accommodate this? And I, 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 I'm really hoping that they will put a village tour in our, in our kiosk. Um, I have a, a box here to show you. And that will, that will go here. So there's four of them and they just fit. And, um, and I was thinking um, what we could do is we could put numbers, one, two, three, four, instead of writing out Beatman Arms. Uh, you know, um, the price of this did include all of that. Um, we do have a grant from the Frost Foundation for this sign. It's a little smaller, so maybe we could, but um, I'd rather see dots than, than clutter up the district and, um, and then have that maybe a legend someplace on the map. Um, but this is it. You asked me to come with the actual size. Mm -hmm. um, I have done so. Um, the, the, thing that I realized that the sign shop hasn't uh, included is down here will be uh, the logo of, of um, Wilberstein. And I realized they had not. There's still a considerable amount of almost Quite. empty space here. And and why do the, why the little boxes that will hold the brochures, they don't necessarily need to be on the sign if you're going to have a whole kiosk with a, with a copper roof. You could probably enlarge the village portion of the of that sign and put some designations of other historic points and maybe drop those little bins below the sign. So you can get more information on a, a probably on a smaller sign and then put those to the right or the left and not include them in the sign. Well, I think we, we were really hoping that the, 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 the roof would help protect these, okay? okay? Um, so with, when you put these with our, our, our brochures in them, that takes up a lot of that space. <coughs> Was the roof going to be just a little bit larger than the sign? Yes. You have a drawing. I don't know where that's gone. It never came back to you. Sorry. Now, now you went to the planning board, right? And they had a number of suggestions. Did you? So she hasn't gotten the report I, I haven't gotten the report from them yet, so I have no idea other than they were hoping that the, the village could be larger. And I, I guess it's hard to move everything that way when these boxes really should go on the sign so people can get it all. I mean, you tell me what will be acceptable. Who did your drawing for your kiosk? Uh, um, Stephen Mann and I came up with the concept, and then we took it to a Duchess Sign, and they they've done they've taken our um, our concept and and laid it out. That's a Red Hook, Duchess Sign. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I kind of agree with Scott. There's a lot of wasted space on there. You, should, you could fill in with something, you know, to make the village bigger. Um, 
see, see, I think the root 9 and 9G you, you just need conceptually there, not really right. you know, in, 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 in relationship to, to, the, to the village. So I think this is all of this here. This is kind of this space. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole foot of root 9 that can be condensed. Right. Well, I certainly could ask him to do that and increase this. But I don't think you're going to get enough room on here. I mean, I, I understand that you'd like to see the buildings a little larger. No. Maybe we could do that, but I don't see I don't see putting everybody's name on there that they feel. Well, the whole village could be half of that side. And then the other side could be some pictures. I mean, we don't want to be signed here. <laughs> you could be assigned here about that. Is that going to be attached on the face of the posts? No, post will be. I would be the post. Yeah. Right, so it's going to be. Version. The corners are going to be. Yes. Attached. They, they, they will, there will be an attachment here to okay. the sign, and the post will be on the outside. But this is the actual size. Now, I'm just wondering if we could mount the plastic things right on the post. To the bottom. Or on the, the side of the post or something. And then you can free up that whole space on there and put the uh, put like the legend and put little dots. And they also said they want to see a you are here, you know, dot. Um, yeah, I think that okay. um, I think that's that's not okay. a problem. I mean, that's that's about, easy to do. How about the actual location of the sign? How was that determined? Because uh, we had some questions on that too. I, I how it was. I, I really walked around the village because I felt it should be in the village. That's where the traffic is. Um, and I, you know, I looked at um, the Bigman Arms in front of the Bigman Arms and, and the post office, which is a federal property. And I looked at uh, Foster's. And, and then I came down this street and your little bench out here and the shrubbery that sets back a little bit and then the driveway where people come out of the parking lot and turn to go into the village was really the best site in it. and there's the, the tourist information booth yeah, that's a suggestion that that i heard the most i have driven by that so many times. And I thought, where would they put it? I mean, there's the, there's trees in front. There's um, Lion's Glasses box. There's, you know, it, it's, it's just a very busy place. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just felt that this sign was going to be um, more visible in this site over here. Well, it seems like there's a number of questions, and we, we, we appreciate your work, and I think the board really wants this a sign that has this information in the village, so we're, we're eager to get that done, I think. Um, but I think there's a number of questions. So I, if, if I had all of the questions, right. you know, David said he was going to send it to me when he got the minutes and, and, <coughs> and well, we can I, get I was, to that. We have, we have it in a email format. We can get you the, the comments from the, the planning board. And you know, I, I certainly can go back and talk to Dave at the sign shop and um, ask Ask him if he can make the roof a little wider. I, I don't know if he can or not to protect the the boxes. I mean they are plastic, um, uh, and and they do and they will deteriorate because of the UV light. And um, so I'm I was thinking of trying to give it as much protection. However, if we put it over there. We've got that south sun that comes around, so we may have to be replacing the boxes frequently. Um, and, uh, you know, we can see if we can enlarge and still get the concept that there's a distance between the equipment house. I mean, it's three miles up the road. Right. Um, and, um, 
and do that. I mean, I have no problem with going back today. My, I have to be really honest with you. I have just about one week before I leave New York. And I'm feeling a little pressured to, to get this done. But I can go up and see Dave, and I can talk to him about making Rhinebeck larger, putting dots on it, um, and then putting a, a um, listing of what, you know, the number one is, number two is. Um, I would, would hope that the Historical Society could give us a listing of those they feel that are historic sites here in the village that could be on that, that list. Um, that would be great. And David could help you with that, right? Yes, I would hope he could. Yeah. Are you going, you not never come back again? <laughs> <laughs> going away for a week? I, I'm, I'm leaving for a week for, on a vacation. Oh. Well, then I'm coming back. I'll be here one week. And then I'm moving to Maine. I'm I'm out of Rhinebeck. Hmm. Well, thank you for your contributions to the community. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, well, I don't think it, you're feeling pressure because you think if it if you don't do it, it won't get done, right? But I think this will get done if you it, can. Stephen Mann, somebody else. Can. I, you know, I I had this design last summer for people to get to it, to do it. And I have to admit that this last fall was busy and I thought, well, we're not gonna put anything up until this next spring. I guess I was too optimistic to think that this would just sail through. Um, I would love to see it, the project that I started, finished. Um, I don't know when you meet the next time, but I'll go tomorrow up and talk to Dave at the sign shop. We'll see what we can come up. We may not, he may not want to print out something as fancy as this. Um, but I can certainly talk with him tomorrow and see if he can incorporate that design. I don't know when you meet again. Pardon me? Next Monday. Otherwise, we have a budget here, and otherwise, our next meeting is this in May. May. I will be gone. So I can appoint maybe David to come or someone else to, to come. Maybe Steve would come and or Nancy Kelly would come. Well, I'll go ahead. Well, I was just say we you know, appreciate your efforts and uh, we can contact you in Maine. In other words, we, we will work with uh, your colleagues and make sure this comes to fruition. But I don't think the timeline, you know, I don't okay. think my impression, because there are a number of questions, where it's going to go, what's the design going to be, that I yeah. don't think can be done in the next few weeks. That's my right. impression. Right. So, um, you know, we'll work with you and um, we'll bring you yeah. back when we get the thing. <laughs> you just have to come back and visit us. That's um, what to it. Yeah. Um, Steve Hubbard, you know who I mean when I say Steve Hubbard, mm -hmm. said, Marilyn, we need a direct line from right back to, to Paris and Maine. And I said, okay, you put it in. <laughs> I'll answer. But um, people do know my telephone number and my email address. And um, I leave very heavy hearted. I, I think it's important that you kind of find out what you want to put on there from the village stuff before you go to the sign shop. Yeah. You have to kind of give them some kind of an idea of how many different points of interest. Do you have it that you could give it to me today? Well, well they the, mentioned that the, the meeting minutes from the from the planning board meeting, I think they're posted or they're probably listed online. Mm -hmm. So that, well, we have them here too. I think you have them as part of the report. But we, they're also online as being the meeting minutes from the meeting that they, I, was it you that attended or somebody? No, Dave. Dave attended. I, I, and it, it made all those recommendations that we just spoke about okay. actually are on here. That, um, as far as you know, hanging the pamphlets from the lower part of the sign and, and doing those different things. So I think if you, you took this as a little bit of a guide, I think some of the written comments, or some of the comments we made are written here, okay. and that will guide you a little bit. As far as getting, they also mentioned here some of the things they'd like to see listed as points of interest. So that's a really good guide. I think it's pretty simple. It's only like 10 things. It's, it's nothing, 
nothing crazy. I think it's just the hot spot. And I need to do it tomorrow if I'm going to do it. So I have a sign recommendation that Karen gave me. So can mm -hmm. I make a copy of this? And sure. Do you want to stop at the office before you go, or do you want me to email it to you? Um, do you have my email? No. Before you leave. Yeah, take that. Is that the minutes? Or? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. It's yeah. the same. Yeah. It's Sorry, versus I, verbatim. Yeah, I just made no, that's okay. Time. But I'm, yeah. I don't, I read them once before. Okay, so that's the it. only other thing that I would be concerned about, and I'm sure the planning board reviewed, is just the, the materials that the signs could not not the sign itself constructed of, but the enclosure, the post, the, the roof, and the details that go along with that. Here we are asking you know the, the people to recognize some of our historic sites. I want to make sure that the sign is pleasing and attractive and enhances our ability. I don't think you were here at the last meeting, and I did pass out. It's going to be pressure treated four by four posts and a copper roof. Um, other than that, I don't recall. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I know you very well from historical restorations and materials, and I know what you like and recognize. And it certainly would be nice if the sign and was it was constructed of those same kind of materials that we we ask all the people that have historic homes and buildings to use. So copper roof is certainly great, and but. Four by four posts is really not something. I know that when I was on the planning board and, and we approved a, a sign for the church that's across the street here, um, we had, and it's very similar to what you're proposing, copper roof and those type of things. But we asked them to use similar materials to some of the historic you know sites that are around here. Actually, uh, um, I could do a Victorian post, and but I, that'd be great. <laughs> Uh, our roots go back much earlier than a Victorian period, well, there's lots which, of which is which is really you select from, but <laughs> a post. But I just, I yeah. think a, a pressure treated four by four is probably not something that we want. Um, Maybe under me. Well, if it's if it's if it's um, I don't know that it would be pressure treated. I think it would probably be. Um, a mahogany post or um, painted that certainly acceptable, yeah. Right. No, no. Instead of a I, I, I certainly wouldn't want a pressure treated. Right. Okay. Maybe I remember it's been correct. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but but if you go back to our colonial times, they, they didn't have the capability of making turnings and all that are right. Victorian. So I that's why I like the simplicity of it. And I didn't want a shingle roof. I, I want something that's going to be more lasting. And um, so th those are the elements that I've selected. Simple and painted certainly is exciting. Yeah. Right. And, and something like mahogany that's going to withstand rotting, <laughs> not pine, certainly. Thanks, Marilyn. You're welcome. Thanks. You guys got any other right, right here. All the way You guys got anything else before we go to the second session? No, I'll make a motion. What the, is it something on the um, July of anniversary dates? Uh, no, just a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, counting the issues of individuals? Yes. Yeah. I'll make the motion to go to uh, executive session to discuss personnel matters. Sir, do you, could you frame that with wording under the It's, it's on the. <coughs> It's on the employment history of particular individuals. That's all. That's it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Motion to reopen the general session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any other business? Any questions? No. Okay. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.